As an investor, I run into houses all the time that need a facelift inside and out. Stacked stone can really add to the appeal of a house. Now you can spend hundreds of dollars on a panel similar to the one behind me, or you can watch this video and I'll show you how to make your own. Today on Mika Mates. Alright guys, so today on Make and Makes, I'm going to show you how to make that dry stacked stone look that will go above the fireplace. So here are a couple of things that you'll need for this project. I'll be using foam board, canned foam spray, plaster of Paris, aerosol spray, this is just regular olive oil from the grocery store, rubber silicone part A and part B, and you'll also need a foam cutter. So step one, you're going to remove the paper from the front side as well as the back side. Now we're going to cut it into thirds. Now I'm just eyeballing this. Then we'll spray our adhesive on and you'll stack them. Now, right here where we have this extra bit from when we eyeballed it, I'm actually gonna cut this off and we're gonna use this. Okay. So I'm gonna use this to create couple of rectangles, maybe a few long ones, a few squares, a few short ones. And you'll glue them down in whatever random pattern you'd like to place them in. But before you do this, I'm going to have you go ahead and give yourself a finalized edge of what you want this side to look like. And you only have to do one side at a time. Once you have gone through and you've drawn what you want this edge to look like, you'll go ahead and cut it out. I'm going to show you on a different piece what I mean by this. I'm just applying a thin layer of adhesive. So now that I've created this, now I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw what I want my stones to look like along this edge right here. Now, once I've done this along this edge, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. It doesn't have to be precise or exact. Now, 
Although you can skip this step if you want to, this step is actually pretty essential and you'll see why later in the project. So what you're gonna do is you're going to trace what you've done on a piece of paper or this foam board that I have here. This step is gonna ensure that both sides will actually fit with each other. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna trace it. And once I've traced it, I'm gonna cut it out. This is gonna act as a transfer. This will actually show me what this side needs to look like. So I'm gonna carve this side so that it matches. This will ensure that two pieces that are sitting side by side will actually interlock with each other. So just to show you what I mean by this, I'm going to outline one side so that you can see that it will work with the opposing side. So if you have two pieces side by side, you'll be able to lock with each other. This will be so important when you get ready to actually lay your panels. You will also want to do the same technique on um, both sides of the panel as well. And now is as good a time as any to go ahead and lay out your stones. You'll glue these down and go through and trace out exactly what you want your stack stones to look like. Remember, they don't have to be perfect. And we want to have some small pieces, some big pieces, some thin pieces, some thick pieces. Okay, so now that you have the complete pattern put on here, now you'll just take your hot tool and you're gonna go through and you're gonna carve um, along the lines. You can carve off the lines. Um, some spots will be deeper than others. Remember, you wanna give this a very realistic look to it. Um, so you wanna make sure that you distort these perfect images that you have here on the board. So right here where you have these perfect squares, um, you wanna kind of break that up. Maybe this side of it is a little higher than this side of it. Um, so you'll kind of melt this all down going into the foam board, um, distort the corners a little bit so that they're not so perfect. Because remember, these natural stones don't occur so perfectly like that. Now, after you've done that, go ahead and take your spray. This will be not the adhesive spray, but the oil spray. You're gonna completely coat your project down 
in the oil spray before you mix up your part A and part B uh, silicone mix. When mixing your rubber, you wanna make sure that you follow the manufacturer's instructions. My manufacturer calls for a one-to-one -one ratio, so I'm gonna use one part, part A, and the same amount in part B. You're gonna mix it really well. I find that if I let it sit for about two to three minutes, then pour it over the model, uh, it tends to, to turn out really, really well, and it doesn't tend to run so much. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. Actually, it's only been about 12 hours, but you can see that my silicone is completely set. So let's go ahead and remove it from our tray. This might actually take a little bit of working to do. Okay, so now that we've gotten the tape off, let's try and remove this from the styrofoam. Okay, so we've just about removed all of the styrofoam here. Now, we just need to clean up the mold. We wanna make sure that we alleviate all of these different undercut areas. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those. Now, if you have a hard time the way that you saw, I had a hard time. That means that you had undercut, undercuts that were located in your styrofoam. Um, so you wanna make sure that you um, seal off any undercuts you can do that by pouring um, plaster or any type of um, molding agent like that pour a little plaster over it use a paintbrush paint in all the nooks and crannies uh, and then re remove all the excess plaster and then let that set up and then use this step and it'll go a lot smoother for you so i'm just going to go through and remove all these little tags that are located here Now the reason I can't give you specific dimensions for your particular project is because it really depends on the space that you're putting your stacked stone in. Now one can of this will actually cover two of my panels. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you. My fireplace measures 37 inches by 53 inches. So let's take a look at this. So now you've pulled your silicone mold. And this is my silicone mold. You can see that I've used it quite a bit. You're gonna take your aerosol oil and give this a nice coat. You can't be too generous with this. Now, you can actually order the silicone um, spray that will help to break any bonds that are made. It does cost about 20 to $25, but I find that the aerosol spray um, on at the grocery store actually works just as well. So here it's coated and I'm gonna take my gap and crack foam 
which is my canned foam. You'll make sure that you shake it for 60 seconds. You'll dispense this in an upside down. And make sure you go nice and slowly along the edges. And then I'm gonna do the next row about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half away from it. I know that sounds crazy, but this stuff expands quite a bit. Now I know what some of you might be wondering about, some of you might be wondering about some of the imperfections and the, the cracks that will show up from having such a large gap in here, but I promise you are gonna have a very nice finish. Now because this stuff expands so much, the one that I'm using is actually for small cracks. If you get the one for larger cracks, just make sure that you create a bigger gap, something bigger than one centimeter. And also doing this particular technique will actually save you some time because each of these rows will actually set up a lot quicker. Yeah, I'm just gonna make sure that I filled in my edges right here. I'm gonna coat this with a little bit of spray. This will keep it from adhering to the foam board. We're gonna turn this upside down. Now, if you are a little pressed for time, you might consider taking a warm towel, uh, make sure it's nice and hot actually, and then just drape the whole thing over this and that'll help it set up. Because remember, heat acts as an accelerant. Okay, now while this is setting up, this particular um, foam spray and technique will take about 40 minutes um, I find some of them, uh, I was able to pop them off after about 30 minutes, um, but 30 to 40 minutes should do the trick. In the meantime, I'm going to make sure that my nozzle is cleared out. You can wait till it sets up and then use a pipe cleaner to clean it out because you'll want to reuse that. This can can get me through about three of these um, silicone molds. And I find that that really, really saves money because that means this one mold of foam is worth a dollar. And so that works out great. Okay, so we've pulled our bottle out. Now, one of the things I wanna point out to you, you may get something that looks like this. Notice how I have voids in here where the foam wasn't actually able to connect with each other, but that's okay. These imperfections will still look great. I'm gonna show you how to do this. You're going to simply, every so often, you're gonna cut one of these stones out now we'll place it back in there. But these voids actually give it a realistic appeal. So don't panic. All right, so I cut this one out. I can take it and shape it to be what I need it to look like. Now this part right here, I'm just gonna flatten that out. You can honestly do whatever you want to this piece. And notice the large void that you have there. You can actually fix that with paint. Remember the furthest, um, the deepest part of the sculpture, that will actually appear the darkest. So you're gonna want to paint this part, uh, whatever your darkest color is on your palette. Okay, and then here where these are, I'm just using my finger to kind of mold it. 
and make it look less like an air bubble and more like imperfect stone. Because remember, stone is not perfect. This is going to look really, really nice. Trust me. While you're here, you might take a flathead screwdriver. You can go through and kind of widen your gaps a little bit. What I did on mine was I actually cut quite a few pieces out. <clears throat> Even though I set them back in their original spot, it still gave it this almost wide gap here. And that really kind of adds that extra bit of realism to the stone. You know, we went in with our, when we were sculpting this, we, we did a great job, you know, making it look real, you know, where um, the interproximal spaces were. But when you pull the stones out and you literally work the edges, uh, that is what really gives it that very realistic appeal. Okay. Make sure nothing is super square because remember our stones won't appear to be square in nature. All right and so we'll create a few more of these. Once we've done this then we'll simply start to you can fill in some of uh, these imperfections with a little bit of plaster that step is optional. Um, you may also use, uh, there's a styrofoam spread that you can use as well to kind of give it that smooth uh, surface. I actually, I like um, the stone look that kind of has the air bubbles. What I do is I just use my finger to kind of accentuate them a little bit. And trust me, once it's painted, no one will know the difference. So let me take you to the next step. Let's go ahead and start working on uh, creating the wall of cardboard. Now, whatever space that you're using to um, as your inspiration, you'll use foam board or you can use cardboard. Honestly, cardboard is cheaper. And remember, no one is going to see this. It's going to be the back part of your masterpiece. Um, I'm constructing my uh, board out of cut out pieces of foam board. I'm using whole pieces as well as scrap pieces um, to cover my mantle uh, right here above the fireplace. So once you have all of the pieces that you need for the replica that you've created out of cardboard, now all you'll need to do is take all of them and affix them in place. I actually used hot glue. Um, get those glued down and then take it outside and paint it. So to give your stones that smooth finish that stones tend to have, you can opt to paint plaster on the surface of the stones and then just let it dry. I didn't do this for all of mine. I just wanted to do it on some of them just to get a feel for the effects of the plaster. But before we paint it, let's try it on the wall to make sure it's a good fit. Here you'll see I'm starting with my um, crevices first and I go with my darker color. Um, for my particular palette, I'm using black as well as dark brown. I'm using beiges, creams, as well as white. You will also see me using a little bit of peach uh, and just a touch of yellow um, that I'm adding to this piece because it really actually brings all the colors together. You can't see them individually, um, but all the colors kind of play off of each other. All right guys, so it's time for installation. So I'm using liquid nail for this part. Now before you do, make sure that your wall is clean and dry. I find it helpful to make sure that my liquid nail has dried just a little bit before I place the piece on the wall. All right guys, so today on Make and Make, I showed you how to recreate this stacked stone look 
using foam board, insulating can foam, silicone rubber, and a few coats of paint. This project did take some time, so give yourself a full weekend to complete. For a quicker result, consider making more than one impression. This will cut down on your production time greatly. Once you install it, send me pictures so I can highlight your masterpiece. So this has been another episode of Mika Makes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out my next video, and hit that notifications button so you know when I've posted something new here on Mika Makes.